Hi, I'm Peter Burris, and welcome back to another CUBE Conversation. This one from BMC's Helix Immersion Day at the Santa Clara Marriott in Santa Clara, California. Once again, we've got a great set of topics for today. Today, right now, what we're going to talk about is the, everybody talks about the explosion in the amount of data, but nobody talks about the resulting or associated explosion in software. And that may, in fact, be an even bigger issue than the explosion in data, because ultimately, we want to apply that data and get work done. Now, that's going to require that we rethink services, rethink service management, rethink operations, and rethink operations management in the context of how all this new software is going to create new work, but also can perform new classes of work. So to have that conversation, we've got a couple of great guests. Niyaka Nier is the BMC president of Digital Services and Operations Management Division to BMC. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you. Look forward to it. And Mahir Shukla is the CEO of Automation Anywhere. Mahir, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, nice to be here. So, Niyaki, I want to start with you. A year ago, we started on this journey of uh, how this new digital services is going to evolve to do more types of work for people. How has BMC's Helix platform evolved in that time? Yeah. So if you remember last time, uh, this was almost a year back when we launched Helix, which was all around taking the service management capability that we had on-prem, uh, made it available in cloud, containerized so customers can run in cloud of their choice, and provide that experience through various channels, bots as a uh, channel of that customer experience. This is what we had released uh, last time, we call it the three C's for Helix, everything in cloud, containerized with cognitive capabilities so customers can transform that experience. In this uh, version, uh, what we are extending Helix is with the operations side. So all the ITOM capabilities that we have in our platform are now a part of Helix. So we have one end-to-end -end platform so that customers can discover every asset that they have on-prem and in cloud, monitor those assets, detect any anomalies, service both for lines of business and for IT, remediate any issues that happen vulnerabilities that are there in the system and automatically uh, optimize capacity and cost on holistically this whole closed loop of operations and service coming together is what this next wave of innovations that we are launching with BMC Helix. So Mihir, uh, Niyaki's talked about uh, very successfully and, and Helix has been a very successful platform for improving user experience. Exactly. But up front I noted that we're not just talking about human beings as users anymore. We're not talking about software as users. RPA, or Robotic Process Automation, is a central feature of some of these new trends. Tell us a little bit about how Robotic Process Automation is driving an increased need mm -hmm. for this kind of digital service and operations management capability. Sure, the, I think at a high level you have to think of the new organization as augmented organization that are human and bots working side by side, each doing what they're best at. And so in a, in a specific example of a service organization, uh, the, the, where, where BMC Helix is, Helix, Helix is taking this is, think of this as a utility, where the way you plug it into an electricity outlet and switch on the light and you get the electricity, you plug into the BMC Helix and behind it you have augmented workforce of chat bots, RPA bots, human beings, each doing what they're best at and giving a far superior customer experience unlike any other. Uh, th that is happening now, and that's the future of, of, of service industry. But when you plug a human, yeah. so to speak, metaphorically, into that system, there's a certain amount of time, there's a certain amount of training, there's a certain, and as a consequence, you can have a little bit more predictable scale. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you don't end up with a lot of complexity. But RPA seems, that the potential of RPA seems that you're going to increase the rate at which these users, in this case, digital users, are going to enter into the system. You don't have a training regimen you can attach to them. They have to be tested, they have to be discovered, they have to be put into operation with reliability. How is that ultimately driving the need for some of these new capabilities? I think you, you if you think of this, uh, if you think of these bots as a digital workers, you almost have to go through the same process that you would go through human beings. You onboard them in terms of you configure them, you train them with cognitive capabilities, and they, and, and then, and the, and the one difference is they monitor themselves <laughs> right. uh, without any bias. They, they can give you, they can give you, give, they can give their own uh, performance rating, performance rating card. 
Um, but the, the beauty of this is when human and bots work together because there are some functions that the, that bots can do well and then at some point they can hand off to the human beings and human beings do some of the more interesting uh, work that is based on judgment call, customer service, all of that. Um, so that, that combination is the, is the end goal uh, for, for everybody. And to add to what Bihar said, right, that customer experience, whether you're providing an experience to employees or consumers or end customers, that is the ultimate goal. That's the ultimate result of what you want to get. And the speed at which you provide that experience, the accuracy at which you provide the experience, and the cost at which you provide that experience becomes a competitive differentiation, which is where all this automation, this augmentation that we are doing with humans and bots is what enables us to do that, right? For all large enterprise customers, ma major service organizations trying to transform into that future world. But increasingly it seems as though the, uh, the things that we have to do to orchestrate and administrate more users, digital and human, undertaking more complex tasks where each is best applied right. uh, is really driving a lot of new data, as mentioned up front, an enormous amount of new software, and you said new experiences, but those experiences have to be reliable, have to be secure, yeah. they have to be predictable. Exactly. So that suggests this overwhelming uh, impact of all of these capabilities. You talk about a digital tsunami. Yeah. What are some of the key things that you think enterprises are going to have to do to start engaging that? Yeah, I mean, whether we call it fourth industrial revolution, whether we call it digital transformation, I think what we all are experiencing is this tsunami, tech tsunami, right? Tsunami of clouds, where you have proliferation of clouds, private clouds, hybrid clouds, managed clouds, tsunami of devices, uh, not just the mobile devices, but also as everything around us is getting connected, IoT devices. Tsunami of channels, I mean, as an end user, I want to experience that in the channel of my preference, Slack as a channel, SMS as a channel. Uh, tsunami of bots, uh, of conversation bots and RPA bots. So, in this tsunami, I think what everyone is trying to figure out is how do they manage this explosion? It's humanly impossible to do it all manually. You have to augment it with, of course, intelligence, AI, ML, but then, of course, bots become a big part of that augmentation to orchestrate all of that back-to-back -back processes. I, I would say that the, the, the this is no longer nice to have yes. because if you look at from our consumer's perspective, last 20 years of digital technologies are from Amazons and Googles of the world, Netflix and others, they have created this mindset of instant customer gratification. And we have all been trained for it. So what was acceptable five years ago is no longer acceptable in our own lives. Exactly. Right? Yes. You, you, and so this new standard of instant result, instant outcome, instant response, instant delivery, we, we just expect it, right? Once your co end consumer begins to do that, we as a business is no longer have a choice exactly. that's writing on the wall. Yeah. And so what these new platforms are doing, like with BMC Helix and automation anywhere, is 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 delivering that instant uh, gratification right and uh, when you think about it more and more of the new customers that are millennials they they don't know any other way so for them this is the only experience they will relate to so again this is not nice to have yeah, it's not nice to have <laughs> it's like it it is the it is the only way only way world will operate right uh, well what we're trying to do is take on new classes of customer experience um, uh, new operational opportunities to improve our profitability, uh, innovate and find new value propositions. But you mentioned time. You know, the arrival rate of transaction is no longer predictable. It's going to be defined by the market, not by your employees. Yeah. Uh, we could go on and on and on with that. What is, uh, tell us a little bit about Automation Anywhere and what Automation Anywhere is doing to try to ensure that as businesses go off to attend to the complexity that creates new value, they at the same time can introduce simplicity where they can get scale and more automation. Sure. Uh, you earlier mentioned that with explosion of data came the explosion of applications. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, what? let me focus on what problem Automation Anywhere solves. So if you look at large organizations, they have vast amount of applications, sometimes 400, 800, few thousand. And what we, have been, what we have been doing historically is using people as a human bridges between these applications. 
and we have operated that way for too long and and, and that's the world today so humans are the interface They're humans the are interfaces. the bridges between applications right. and and the, often called as a swell chair operations that's an easiest way Swivel to describe chair, yeah, it so, yeah, so, yeah. so the uh, what automation ever does is it offers this technology platform robotic process automation ai and analytics platform that integrates all of it together into a seamless automation bot that can go across and with ai it can make intelligent wow. intelligent choices um, and so now take that combined with the bmc helix and you have a seamless service platform that can deliver superior experience so we've got now these the swivel chair users right. now being software right. uh, which means that we can discover them more easily we can monitor them more easily and that feeds helix absolutely so uh, you know in our uh, consumer world in our day-to-day -day life uh, we are used to a certain experience of how we consume data or consume uh, experiences with our tvs and all the channels that experience that we have in our day-to-day -day life is what people expect when they walk into the company, right? Walk into the enterprise, which every IT organization is trying to figure out how do they get to that level of maturity. So this is what uh, the combination of what we are doing with Helix and uh, Automation Anywhere brings that consumer great experiences into an enterprise world. So Mihir, when we think about RPA, we're applying it in interesting and innovative ways, no question about it. But there are certain patterns of success. Give us a, some visibility into what you are seeing leads to success, and, and then what's the future of RPA? How is that going to evolve over the next few years? Sure. The, um, so RPA has been deployed across virtually every industry and virtually every department. So there are many ways to get started, and all of them are right. But often we find is that the, you can either start in a central organization where entire organization is doing everything centrally. It is a great way to get started, but eventually we learn that the federated way is the best way to end, where hundreds of offices all over the world, if you are especially a large organization, each business unit is doing it with IT providing governance and central security and policies. And, and actual bots running and being implemented all over the world. Uh, eventually for a large scale transformation, uh, that is a common pattern we have seen among successful customers. And where do you think this is, how is this pattern going to evolve? As enterprises gain more familiarity with it, innovate in new and interesting ways, and as automation anywhere and others advance the state of the art. Where do you think it's going to end up? The way it is going is, uh, is I define it as an App Store experience or a Google Play experience. So if you think about how we operate our mobile devices today, if you want something on your device, you would look for an app that does that. Uh, we are getting to a point where there is bot for everything and a digital worker for everything. So if you need certain job done, you first go to a bot store uh, that, that is an Automation Anywhere website, look for a bot that does something, hire or download that bot, get a work done, and it comes pre-built like many that are works with BMC Helix um, and many others. So, 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 so that is your first, first way you will look, look for getting a work done in a new bot economy. And if, it, if it, there's no bot available, then you look for other options. Um, it will transform how we work and how we think of work. In many respects, it's the gig economy with perfect contracting, right? That's right, that's right. And yeah. it's, that leads to some very interesting challenges, ultimately, when we start thinking about services. Mm -hmm. So, Niaki, based on what Mihir just talked about, where does digital services go as RPA joins other classes of users in creating those new experiences at new profit points and new value propositions? Yeah. It becomes a competitive, how you provide that service uh, can become a big competitive differentiation for financial institutions, for telcos, which is a service industry, right? You're providing that service. And um, like to Meher's point, when the user hits that switch, they expect the light to come on. So if I'm an end user, that consumer wanting a service from my telco provider or from my um, uh, a, uh, financial institution, I expect that service to be instantaneous. At the highest accuracy, accuracy at which you provide, is going to start driving competitive differences from financial institution to financial institution, telco to telco. And that's how I see companies differentiating and really uh, surviving or thriving in the long term.
Yeah, it's it's no longer becoming something that's nice to have. Yes. It's jacks are better in business exactly. today. That's right. And, yeah. I, and the demo, the live demo that we saw today was really impressive because it showed that what would have taken few days to happen now happens in three minutes, minutes. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which, which, is, which, is, which, which is almost the time it takes to call an Uber. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, right. to, to, when enterprises begin to do work at a, at a pace that, that Uber, you call Uber. an Uber, that's, that's, the, yeah. that's the future. Yeah. And it's, it's here. Yeah, so to, I mean, the demo that we do, the entire end-to-end -end demo to uh, request additional storage and being able to provision it, remediate any issues that we see, uh, did, uh, predict cost, and make it available to the end user, develop, whoever it is is asking for it in minutes, right? right? Which used right. to take days and days, not no, no, not to mention sometimes in weeks also, That's right. right? And it's typically done faster at scale with greater reliability, greater greater security, exactly. certainly greater predictability, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. All right, Mihir Shukla, CEO of Automation Anywhere, Nyaki Niyar, uh, president of the uh, Digital Services and Operations Management Division at BMC. Yes. Thanks both of you for being on theCUBE. Thank you. Pleasure really to be here. It. Thank you. Thank you. And once again, I'm Peter Burris, and I want to thank you for participating in this CUBE conversation from the Santa Clara Marriott at BMC's Helix Immersion Days. Until next time. <laughs>